then the same at the end. Be silent night. And then, yeah, and then the very last, do not be afraid, is the same as we've been doing. Yep. I'll turn the organ on. All right, I think that's it for us in here. So let's um, sally forth to the choir room and answer any questions we still have. Uh, leave the, yeah, leave the candles and the community in here. Again. I'm done. I'm officially done. Yes, we're going to pray. Yes. What did you say? Do you want me to? Do uh, you have the communion thingy? No. Okay, I'll grab one. No. No. Justin, are we doing what this? What did I say when I came back in? So this is when. They were during the back and forth between the four never, readers. Never mentioned to me. I was in here earlier. I never yeah. mentioned okay. that I was needed to do that. I'm going out. In that threshold moment, they're saying, oh, you know.
Daniel's okay. He's okay. He's okay. Greetings, beloved. I'm Dr. Felicia LaBoy, lead pastor and life coach here at the historic First United Methodist Church in downtown Elgin, Illinois. Whether you're joining us online or on the radio, we greet you in the name of the one who loves you enough to clothe himself in human flesh. On this evening, whether you are a regular attender or whether this is your first time or your first time back in a while, you are welcome in this place. For the truth of this night is that God, God has invited each of us to a new birth, a birth that makes us all the same, people on the path of life who are yearning for messages of, God's, of God, messages that bring more hope, more people, more joy, and more love into our lives. As you participate this evening, we ask that you allow this moment of knowing that God has those things for you, peace, hope, love, joy. More than that, know that you are loved by God, that you are important, that he favors you. Let us enter into the worship of our Lord. All throughout the Christmas story, if we've been paying attention, We've heard stories of angels appearing to people, bringing about the good news that a savior is on the way. The first angel going to someone by the name of Zechariah to let him know that his little one would be the one that would prepare the way for the Lord. Then there's the angel that goes to Mary and then the angel that goes to Joseph that says, don't be Afraid, do not put Mary away. This thing is of God. And finally, the angels that came to the shepherds to announce the incredible news of the birth of a Savior. These angels didn't appear to kings or rulers or courts or the privilege of society. They came to an old barren and barren couple, a young girl, barely a woman, a simple and humble man engaged to her, and finally to the lowly shepherds on a hillside. They came to people like you and me. You know, God works through ordinary people to do extraordinary things. And so it is that God works through us every time we offer messages of hope. Our fire went out. Oh, come on, if you can't laugh on Christmas night, when can you laugh? This is supposed to be a joyful occasion, right? Let's try this, take two. 
And so it is that God works through each of us every time we offer messages of hope, of peace, of joy, and of love to an anxious world. Beloved, you and I are to be angels in this place right now, and we are called to fly in the face of fear so that you and I might be modern-day angels among us. found in your bulletin. You will read the words that are in bold and I will read the words that are not. When you have it, please say amen. amen. Holy and living God, blessed Jesus guiding spirit, together a light within us, your flame of love this day. Grant us openness to hear your message. Together, grant us courage to be your messengers in the world creating more love in the midst of fear. And with the angel messengers above us, among us, and within us, we sing. as you are able and join us in our first hymn for this evening, Joy to the World. It's found in the red hymnal, number 246, Joy to the World.
Before you are seated, I invite you to pass the hope of Christ with your neighbors. For each time we connect with each other, hope grows. You can wave to one another. That's our custom here this morning, wave. There's some folks in the balcony. Let folks know that you're so glad to see folks here this morning. There'll be time to gather afterward, but let people know how glad you are that folks are here, amen? You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Now listen closely as we proclaim the story of God's word. the story according to the messengers of God, present then and present now. We remember the angel appearance to Zechariah, husband of Elizabeth and cousin to Mary, foretelling the birth of their son, John. Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And so it was. Elizabeth, even in her old age, was finally pregnant with John, who would prepare a way for Jesus' teaching many years later. Six months later, in Nazareth, a city in the rural province of Galilee, a heavenly messenger, Gabriel, made another appearance. This time, the messenger was sent by God to meet with a virgin named Mary, who was engaged to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David himself. The messenger entered her home and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing is impossible with God. 
At first perplexed by this, Mary resolved to offer herself as the vessel through which more love was born into the world. But Joseph, her fiance, needed some encouragement too, for becoming pregnant before their marriage was a serious offense in the eyes of the community. A messenger was needed. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. It is written, she will bear a son and you will, are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And so Joseph stood by her, and she grew with the presence of God within her. The story continues. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and lied him in a manger, because there was no place for them at the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then the angel of the Lord stood before him of them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angels said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly hosts. You are the multitude of messengers who have gathered this night to proclaim this good news. And the angel, angels of God praised God and said, Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the, the highest heaven, heaven, and on earth, and earth peace, peace and goodwill good good among, among all, all people. people. Yes, we can all be messengers of God and give thanks this night that God has given us the wings of love to help us carry this message. Please stand as you are able to sing hymn 238 in the red hymnal, Angels We Have Heard on High.
Please be seated. When the angels had left them, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Amen. How many of you all remember the, the uh, TV series, Touched by an Angel? Anybody in here remember that series? For those of you who are not old enough or don't know what that is, Google it, YouTube it, watch one, and be blessed. But for those of us that remember the story of Touched by an Angel, you remember there were three angels, right? It was Tess and Monica and Andrew. Tess was the one with a nice red Cadillac. She was like the senior angel. I want that job. Andrew was the angel of death, but he was not this harsh angel. He was really one to guide God's um, loved ones home. And then there was Monica. You all remember Monica, don't you? Monica always seemed to get herself into trouble, but she was just the person who was just sent to regular people that were, de were down and out to give them a message, a message of hope, a message of love, a message of peace. Later on, there were two other prominent angels in the story. Do you remember them? There was Raphael. He was the young Hispanic angel. Raphael, the angel of healing. But I found that really funny because in one episode, Raphael gets so mad at his charge, he actually beats him up. He must have missed the memo from God about, being, about healing. And remember Gloria? She was Valerie Bertinelli. Remember? She was the one that made all the accidents, kept having all these accidents, and she just couldn't understand why humans just didn't get it about God, why humans couldn't understand just how much God loved them. You remember that all throughout the story and even in the Bible, the purpose of all those angels um, was to tell people three statements that God has been saying to us all this season. You know what they are? They're the same statements that, that the angel Gabriel made to Mary, and they are these. God loves you. God is with you. God is for you. That's what it means to be favored. You ought to say that sometimes and look in the mirror and say to yourself, especially those days that you feel awful, God loves me. Yeah, even me. God loves you, beloved, and God is with you, and God is for you. You are highly favored. Basically, the story of Touched by an Angel and the story of this night is that, not, that God is going to fix everything. But in the midst of everything, God is Emmanuel, God with us. And God loved us enough to wrap himself in human flesh. That's why I tell people, you can't be mad at who God has made people to be. You can't be mad at their gender. You can't be mad at their race, their ethnicity, their sexual orientation, because God has made human flesh because he wanted to. And he's made each of us the way that he wants us to be. And God, God says to every one of us who are also wrapped in human flesh, is there anyone here who is not? Now that we have that clear, God says three words, I love you, I am with you, and I am forward. You, you are highly favored. And in case people forgot the message, do you remember the song that went with the Touch by an Angel series? It was what it opened with and what it closed with. It was to remind people no matter what, Sunday after evening, after Sunday after an evening, to reemphasize that message. The name of the song was Walk With You, and it was written by Della Reese, who played Tess. The song opened up, when you walk down the road, heavy burden, heavy load, I will rise and I will walk with you. When you walk through the night and when you feel like you just want to give up, give up. 
give up on the fight. I will come and walk with you. Walk with you until the sun don't even shine. Walk with you, I'll be there all the time. I'll tell you I will walk with you and see you through. And when you walk from this place, and you gotta go meet him face to face, take my hand and I will walk with you. Look at your neighbor and tell them God loves you. That wasn't a rhetorical thing, that was an instruction. Look at your neighbor and say, God loves you. Now look at your really good looking neighbor on the other side and say, God is with you. And then put your hands over your own heart and, says, and say, God is for you. Beloved, it is amazing to me that while there can be a TV show or even I know in some magazines that weekly acknowledge the presence of angels, that the church often doesn't have anything to say about angels. Oh yeah, there are some in Christendom that pray to angels, but I'm not talking about that. But when we look on this particular night, if the angels aren't there, we have no story. Is that right? It's interesting to me that as I was studying for this sermon, I found out that Williamson, the, Marianne Williamson, who turned over being the director of this series, which she told the people they had some crazy cockamamie angel story going on. They wanted angels to be like Clarence in It's a Wonderful Life, you know, where you have to earn your wings and all that. And she's like, no, just read through the biblical text and the story of angels is much more, um, exciting, much more practical than that. See, beloved, contrary to popular belief and contrary to It's a Wonderful Life, angels are not dead people who are waiting to get their wings. Angels are created beings somewhere between us and God. Their main purpose is to declare and to promote God's will, to glorify God and to serve as intermediaries, to serve as mediators between God and humans. In heaven, God's will is done by the angels immediately, joyfully, and without question. We are not to worship angels, as some suggest, but we are to heed their messages. As we've seen tonight, as we listen to the Christmas story in a new way, angels are critical to the Christmas Eve message. Just here now, the first angel appears to Zechariah in the temple to tell him that he and Elizabeth will be parents of John the Baptist, the one who is called to prepare the way. Listen to these words from Luke chapter 1, verses 5 through 25, and then 57 through 80. He says, and an angel from the Lord appeared to him, Zechariah, standing to the right of the altar and incense. And when, a, when Zechariah saw the angel, he was startled and overcome with fear. And the angel said to him, Zechariah, don't be afraid. Your prayers have been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give birth to your son, and you must name him John. He will make ready a people prepared for the Lord. It reminds us, beloved, that like all angels, you and I are to be able to bring messages of hope to people who have given up on the fight, to say with the angels, don't be afraid when life doesn't go as planned. Don't be afraid when it seems like your dreams have been missed and it seems like nothing will be changed. Have hope because God is up to something and that that something will be good. The second angel is sent to a little teenage girl by the name of Mary. Again, with the message that she is loved and favored, that nothing is impossible with God. Hear now these words from Luke 1 20 and 26. It says, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary and the angel said to her the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you therefore the child to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God for nothing is impossible with God if you read through those simple passages from Luke chapter 1 what you will find is that while Zechariah was afraid Mary was a little perplexed you remember? She said, How? what? What? Excuse me? Uh, look, Mr. Angel Man, this is how babies happen. I don't know what y'all do in heaven, but this is what happens here. How that gonna happen? 
She was qu questioning and puzzling. And so Mary is the one that, um, uh, that lets us know that angels come to us in the times that we're doubting and the times that we are questioning. It's to bring us peace because you remember the angel just kind of, he soothed her and he said, Mary, listen, I know you got questions. I know you got doubts. I know you don't know how this is going to work out, but all things are possible with God. Beloved, this second angel is meant to show each of us that we are to bring peace to those who have questions and those who have doubts, those who are struggling to find purpose and meaning, those who are wondering, how can this be? How can this be that I've been faithful and I face an illness? How can this be and my money is funny? How can this be and everything's not right? How? Beloved, the angels show you and me that we are to say with all things that God is possible and you can have questions with our God because he can handle it. Those angels and us are called to offer words to ease conflicted minds and souls. The angels are, remind us to say to ourselves and to say to others when we are asking ourselves why and how to remember that in the midst of it all, God loves us. God is with us and God is for us. I love Pastor Stephen Furtick of the Elevation Church, and he says this, in the midst of our questions, our fears, and our doubts, we can have peace when we remember those three things. God loves us, God favors us, and say, and even when we can say, <clears throat> God is for me, and therefore, I don't have to be afraid. And then we can say, be it unto me as thou hast said. The third angel of the story is sent to Joseph. <clears throat> this angel reminds Joseph and us that sometimes doing what God asks requires that we're going to risk looking stupid, that we'll look foolish to others, and that we might have to forsake our reputations. Oh, you all know what happened, right? Imagine this. Here's Joseph. He's getting everything ready for his bride, and she comes to tell him, I know I've been gone three months, but guess what happened while I was away? <clears throat> While I was away, an angel showed up, and I'm pregnant now. Can you imagine? Oh, y'all sitting there like you don't, you don't think you'd have any questions. Imagine if your teenage daughter been gone three months and then come to tell you. I was with the angel, and now I'm pregnant. And Joseph is sitting there, and it says in the text that he doesn't want to shame Mary. Really, he could have had her killed, but he decides to put her um, aside because he doesn't want her to be embarrassed or him to be embarrassed. And yet, an angel shows up to Joseph to encourage him. The angel says, it's okay, Joseph. Mary is carrying something really important, and you need to walk with her. Beloved, the point of this third angel is to show you and I that sometimes God requires us to stand with those that the world condemns. See, Mary would have died on the spot had people known that she was pregnant out of wedlock. Sometimes you and I are called to be angels of encouragement and steadfast support for what the Spirit is birthing in the world. And when we remember to offer people encouragement and support and to stand with them and to let them know that God loves them, God is with them, and God favors them, even in this, we can bring joy to the world by helping people to focus on what God is doing rather than what is happening around them and what people are saying about them. And then finally, 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 a host of angels come on this night to bring the greatest message ever heard by humankind. That message is that God loves us so much that he wraps himself in human flesh because he refuses. He refuses to live without us. He wraps himself in human flesh because on this night, in the form of this babe, God is sending a message of love and hope and peace and joy to say that now it is possible for you to live with me always. Why? Y'all know what I'm going to say, don't you? Because God loves us. God is with us and God favors us. 
Now, some of you all might say, well, if, if that's true, Pastor Felicia, then why is my life like this? How come things aren't going the way that I want them? Then I remind you of the story of one by the name of Gideon in Ju Judges chapter 6. You remember God sent an angel to Gideon to say, Gideon, you mighty man of valor. He was hiding out, trying to beat out a small existence. And God said, wait, Gideon, you are doing the best you can do, but you need to allow me to do what I can do. God's point to Gideon that night and to the shepherds on this night is that God isn't mad anymore and that God is at peace with us. Please know, beloved, that God, no matter where we find ourselves, has not forsaken us. He has not left us behind. But in this little one, God says to us again and again, I love you, I favor you, and I'm with you. This little one, God's love letter to each of us, is here to let us know that we don't have to be afraid. Why? Because God loves us, God favors us, and God is with us. And sometimes, just sometimes, to be all that God wants us to be, even in the midst of our fears, our doubts, our questions, the risk of losing our reputation and looking like a fool, sometimes to be all that God intends for us to be, all we can do is just know for a fact that God loves us, that he is for us and that he's with us, and then to step out in faith on that assurance. The assurance that God loves me and God is for me and God is with me and he's with you and he loves you and he is for you. And if that is the case, then when he stretches out his hand, all you have to do is to take the first step. Here is the point, beloved. The message is that you and I in this place are to be angels. Not angels with wings or crooked halos, any of those things, but angels in terms of being messengers. Messengers who are sent forth from this night with the message of God's love and peace and joy to all human beings. The message that no matter where you find yourself, no matter who you are, God loves you. God is for you and God is with you. I mean, isn't that what the shepherds do? Don't the shepherds see the angels and then after they go to the manger, they come back and, and they too glorify God and proclaim the message of Jesus Christ? Hear how it sounds in Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 20. Then the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. And so it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And here, beloved, verses 17 through 18 is the lesson for us. And now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. Now Mary kept all of these things in her heart. She seems to be a questioning girl. And then verse 20 says this, Then the shepherds returned. Returned from what? From seeing the angels and from seeing the babe. They returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they have seen and they have heard that it was told to them. What point is it to come tonight and light candles and go through a ritual if we don't do that? If you and I don't move out into the world and be angels, messengers of God's grace and mercy, messengers of God's hope and peace and love and joy, messengers that say to people, God loves you, God is with you, God is for you, he favors you and he's not man anymore. Beloved, like the angels on this holiest of all nights, we are invited into the stillness and the silence of this night to not only see the angels around us, but to be angels to the world. 
proclaiming God's eternal message. God loves you. God is for you and God is with you no matter what, even until the end of time. Beloved, as the song <clears throat> says, you and I will, be, will never be more loved than we are right now. We don't need any trophies or accomplishments to make him proud, for the angels among us have declared that we are loved and we are favored and that God is with us, and so we do not have to be afraid. And that, beloved, is the good news of this night. Amen? Amen. On this night, we all kneel before the Christ child who came to a broken world so that we might know love, so that we can be loved, so that we can be love. This Christ child comes to us without judgment and offers himself to you just as you are. So bring your gifts, bring your hearts, bring your lives in gratitude and celebration of the Christ child whose birth we celebrate this night. Here at First Church, you can give online. There is a tab on our website that says give. You can mail your offerings to the church office. The bulletin also shows several ways that you can give, or you can place it in the offering plate. As always, we are grateful for all that you have done and continue to do. So on that note, would the ushers please come forward to collect the offering. Will you please rise as you are able? Please join me in the prayer of dedication. God of love and possibility, we offer these gifts so that they may be transformed into your good news for the sake of the world. Amen. Please be seated.
I believe there are angels among us, sent down to us from somewhere up above. They come to us and be in our toughest hours to show us how to live, to teach us how to give, to guide us with the life of love. Beloved, if you would look into your table. In this moment of gathering together, we gather in spirit those who are not here with us this night, loved ones that seem too far away, those who have little food, shelter, or company on this night, those who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit, those who are living in fear and the threat or reality of violence, those who wonder if they are loved. In this silence, we call them to mind in the quiet of our hearts. We hear the message of God. Do not be afraid. Sometime later, after Jesus' birth, there were magi, from the east, who observed the star of a new king rising and set out to pay him homage. They followed it until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Tonight, we come to share in the gifts of God. For the life of Jesus became the true gift, more precious than any gold. The gift of God's grace, God's spirit, God's presence is ours to share then, now, and always. All are invited to the table of Jesus Christ. All that is required for you is to open your hearts to the message of love that is already waiting for you. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In the beginning, you created light to shine in the void of darkness. The light of each day has become your reminder that you are with us always, bringing hope in the midst of fear. On this night, we remember the light of the star you set in the sky, pointing to the sign of your love made flesh. We look around, and with the flicker of each candle, we are reminded that your spirit moves among us still. And so we proclaim this ancient song with all of the saints and angels. Holy, 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 holy God, God of power and might. God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you. Blessed are you. You sent your son, Jesus, your message made flesh to dwell among us, harbinger of hope, prince of peace, cup of joy, bread of love. Through Jesus, you gave birth to your church and sealed a new covenant by water and the spirit. With more anticipation and awe than any gift under our tree can give, we remember your gift of love and grace for all. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread and gave thanks to you broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so we celebrate the birth of hope anew as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Touch us, O Spirit, with your transforming power. Open us up to your promise of resurrection from fear and death, and in partaking these elements, let us become your messengers of hope for an anxious world. In all that we say and do, make us one in this purpose, O God. Make us one in your son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. The monthly, weekly, daily gift that reminds us that we are loved, that we are favored, and that God is with us. The bread that represents his body that was given for each of us, take ye now and eat ye all of it. The wine that not only reminds us of the blood that he shed for our, for the forgiveness of our sins, but also for the joy, the joy of his first miracle, the joy that he brings, drink ye now all of it. Arise, my father's children, in the newness of heart in your life, and remember that you are loved, you are, God is with you, God loves you, and God is for you. If you will join us in saying together, we believe, we believe there are angels among us, called within us, not just from above. You give us love enough in these times of trial. You show us how to live. You teach us how to give. You call us to be light and love. Amen. We ask that everyone get their candle. If you need one, will you please uh, raise your hand and we'll make sure that the ushers get you one. I'm going to ask if the ushers will, they will please come.
Take a look around you. Indeed, there are angels among us, precious agents of God's love, bringing the message of life and hope and peace and joy to all inhabitants of this earth. Why is Christmas Eve so magical? Because the candlelight allows us to see our true nature. God's light shines upon us, each one of us, alighting anew the possibility that we can carry this message through the witness of our lives each and every day. I invite you to face this Christ candle now and know this blessed truth. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. Took your soul. Did you blow yourself out? Did you blow it out? You blew yours out. 